What would you say are your two favorite prayers to pray? The Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Jesus Prayer, the Shema, the Act of Contrition, the Morning Offering, the Memorare. We Catholics have a long and rich tradition of formal and communal prayers to draw from. Or maybe your favorite prayers are those that you compose on your own as you go. Anne Lamott has written a book entitled Traveling Mercies, Some Reflections on Faith. And in that book, she tells the reader that her favorite prayers are both of which she finds indispensable to her own spiritual life. The first prayer goes like this. Help me. Help me. Help me. And the second, no less important prayer, like this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finding those two prayers in her book got me thinking about what my own prayer life consists of and what those prayers say about my own relationship with God. I've always been grateful for Peter Peter of the Gospels. Not so much because he's a symbol of unity and authority in our church, but because he's so human. Again and again, he gives a human being like me great hope. Here he is today in this boat with the other disciples, and wouldn't you know it, Peter's the one who asked Jesus flat out, Hey, if it's really you, if it's really you, let me come to you across the water. Now why would Peter ask that? Was he just showing off for the other disciples in front of them? Was he an adventurous sort of guy, a real risk taker? Did he simply just want to get out of that boat before it capsized in the storm? I think the reason he asked, and this is another thing about Peter that makes me love him so, is that he just wanted to be with his Lord. He just wanted to be with his Lord. Fiercely so. And as he gave voice to that desire, he speaks for us all. Peter here is our humanity at its best, and he's also us at our very worst. Like us, or rather should I say, like me, he ends up devoting most of his attention to the fact that he just keeps, seems to be getting wetter and wetter and wetter than he is to the reality that God is doing something really quite miraculous here, which is that in spite of the wind and in spite of the drenching sprays, Jesus is drawing him, is drawing him to himself into his very own arms. Of course, Peter starts sinking. At this point, he could have despaired. I'm going down. I'm a goner. I give up. But none of that, though, for Peter. He's no Judas, you see. Peter wants to live. Peter wants to go on living, even if that means he's going to be struggling struggling sometimes, struggling mightily with trust. 
Or he could have thrown his own pity party at that moment, saying things like, why me? Why is God letting this happen to me? Maybe there is no God. But Peter does not go to pity. Nope. Or he could have pretended. He could have pretended he didn't need someone else to help him in that moment. Pretended like so many of us do. Ashamed to admit out loud to other people, to anybody really, that we have needs of our own, that we need another, thinking it might look weak. It might be embarrassing to admit it out loud that we need someone. But instead of all those things, that durable faith of Peter tells him what to do. And this time he was listening. And here then is Anne Lamont's first prayer. Help me. Help me. Help me. As embarrassing as that was right there in front of people to do, Peter calls out, help me, help me, help me. And regardless of how shame-faced he might be, Peter wants to get back in that boat. And so he does. And we picture him, him and Jesus, tumbling rather unceremoniously back into the boat. And there he is, and that's where he remains, with Jesus and these other very human disciples for the rest of his life, really. And with us, too, I should add. You see, we remain in the boat, too. Sometimes I ask myself, why? Why do I stay? Why do I remain? Why don't I jump ship? When the waves of scandal and of corruption threaten to swamp us, when the leaders don't live up anywhere near to the expectations I have of them, when the weight of my own selfishness promises to send me, send all of us to the bottom of the sea, why am I still in the boat? Well, there are two reasons. First, I trust that Jesus is in this boat too. I do. I really do. I have met him here so often in my need. He's in the boat with us. And secondly, I remain in the boat because of the people I've met, the other wayfarers, those who, like me, come to this place, for example, this very hour, Sunday after Sunday, and climb into this boat and utter that first most beautiful prayer together, help me. You see, I overhear it here again and again, actually. Many of these shipmates are here today, nearly every Sunday, for there is seemingly no end to the crises of our lives that call out for God's help. Look around you here. There is no one here who doesn't need help. Now notice what Jesus does in this gospel. He doesn't condemn Peter when Peter cries out for help, but he does challenge Peter and the rest of us, I'd say, in that boat. Such small faith for such a grown man, Jesus says to him. Such small faith for such a grown man. But it is faith. And did you notice how Jesus fastens on that, 
on that amount of faith. It's not Jesus who has a problem that our faith feels like just a little bit to us. It's we who are tempted to say the sort of thing that Peter says when he says, there's no hope for me, Lord. My faith is too small. I'm a sinful man, don't you see? But it's actually that little bit of faith that Peter and the others in the boat have that gives us what we need to be here. We who are the church, we are the bark of Christ on these seas. We're sort of the regular crew. But there are others, there are other wayfarers too who show up in our midst, who drift up to the side of the boat and reach out a hand to us for help. And it turns out that they're here for the same reason we are, the very same reasons they're not any different from us from, for not being in the boat with us from the beginning or whenever. Someone they love is dying. Something inside of them is dying. And they've begun to feel like they're sinking. And it's one of the great privileges of being baptized. It's one of the great privileges of being in the boat already that we get to be the hand of Christ that grabs hold of them and helps haul them back into the boat with us. One of the great privileges. And all that takes us to the second and that absolutely necessary and absolutely most beautiful prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And isn't that what they're saying at the end of this gospel story? Oh God, thank you, thank you for being God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in saying that, they're also saying, along with us. Let's keep going. We're in this with each other. He's in the boat with us. Let's keep going. For some of us on any given Sunday, the seas are quiet now. And someone is shouting, there's the sun on the horizon. I can see it now. But for others of us on any given Sunday, there might be a raging storm. And we will again be frightened and tossed about. Either way, my friends, another day is upon us. And there is a ready prayer available. Thank you, God. Or...